Hello everyone, welcome to Scaria.com. I'm Maham Afridi and our topic for today is determining level of antimicrobial activity or antimicrobial agents activity. In our today's lecture, we'll focus on how there are different tests that are employed to check the effectiveness of an antimicrobial agent. Uh, we'll also see how those tests vary from each other and what is the principle behind each test. Uh, the major focus of today um, in each test is uh, we initially try to determine the MIC or the minimum inhibition um, uh, or the minimum inhibitory concentration of an antimicrobial agent. The MIC is important because it tells us the amount of uh, the minimum amount, the least amount of antimicrobial agent that can actually stop the growth of bacteria. So it uh, does not necessarily um, kill the bacteria, but it can stop its growth. So that's the MIC, and MIC is going to be a major determinant whenever we are talking about different tests that are used to check the um, activity level of antimicrobial agent. Another level that we usually focus on is the MBC, which is the minimum bacteriostatic um, uh, concentration. So in, in case of bacteriostatic, we are actually talking about the concentration of um, antimicrobial agent that is required that will kill the bacteria. So what we usually do is we grow the pathogens in a broth or a nigger, uh, and then we check uh, what is the minimum amount of antimicrobial agent that can at least stop the growth of bacteria after in incubation of usually 24 hours. And we also then take a colony, uh, we also take an inoculum from the no grow, grown um, area or no growth zone on the culture plate. And then we inoculate it again just to see that uh, now on which concentration the bacteria will be entirely killed as opposed to their growth being stopped. So that's the MBC. So in our today's um, lecture, we'll focus on the MIC and MBC, and then we'll see the principle behind each and every test and how those tests also are dependent on MIC and MBC uh, to check the um, effective, uh, effectiveness or the activity of antimicrobial agents. We'll also focus on different types of pathogens that you're testing against because the tests depend on um, the antimicrobial agent or the antibiotic that is being used and also on the type of pathogen. For example, the test that you commonly uh, use for an anaerob will be different from the test that we use for aerobic bacteria or the tests um, that are more suitable or ideal for bacteria that grow, grow more rapidly as opposed to other bacteria. So that's all we'll be focusing on in today's um, uh, section or today's lecture. There are three sections in, um, in our today's lecture, and in each section, we'll uh, study three different types of um, um, antimicrobial agents tests. So the first one is uh, to check the antimicrobial agent effectiveness. Uh, this is used, uh, known as dilution susceptibility test. As the name suggests, this test is, uh, is done by diluting different concentrations of um, uh, the antibiotic and then letting bacteria grow in it. And so the minimum concentration of antibiotic in which there is no growth, uh, that is the concentration um, that we usually employ as, uh, or that we usually term as a safe uh, concentration to stop the growth of microbes. Um, there can be broth dilution test and agar dilution test in dilution susceptibility test. It depends on uh, whether the uh, bacteria that is to be grown is um, grown better in a liquid broth as compared to um, um, a solid agar substrate. So it depends on the type of pathogen that you're testing. And so you can use broad dilution as well as agar dilution. Um, in both the cases, uh, the uh, medium used is the same, uh, but in one it's in liquid form and in the other it's in the solid form. Um, and uh, the, both of them uh, depends on the MIC value to determine the safe zone um, in which the concentration of antibiotic is sufficient enough to stop the growth of uh, bacteria, but 
uh, it's also safe enough for, for the host cell because it's really important to determine that concentration in which the antimicrobial agent uh, is safe to be used. It's not toxic or it's not damaging the host cells. Um, in section two, we'll be discussing the diff disc diffusion test. Uh, we'll start with the principle of disc diffusion test. We'll see how MIC plays a role in, uh, in this particular test as well. We'll also see what zone width is and how it helps us determine different factors uh, uh, of an antimicrobial agent. And we'll see what the Kirby Bauer method is. Kirby Bauer were actually two scientists who, who devised this diff diffusion method. Um, we'll also see how graphs are plotted and how those graphs actually help us determine the bacteria that are resistant, that are susceptible, and the amount of uh, antimicrobial agent that is ideal. In section three, we'll focus uh, on another test that is the E-test. E-test was formerly called as the epsilometer diagnostic test. It's an in vitro test that, that uses a strip which has clear markings or a scale on it. And so different um, antibiotic concentrations are loaded on the uh, strip as well. So th this is one thing which is common in disc diffusion and E-test is the disc and the strips both are loaded with antibiotic. But the difference between the two which you need to um, uh, keep in your mind is that in disc diffusion test, the disc uh, is impregnated with the same concentration of um, antimicrobial agent as opposed to the strip which has different concentration of antimicrobial agent and the concentration actually makes up um, an elliptical zone that helps us um, identify the activity of the agent. So. Again, we'll see. Uh, we'll determine the MIC in this case as well, and then we'll see how we can uh, determine the level of antimicrobial activity. So that that's all we'll be covering in today's um, lecture. I hope you're excited to learn more about the determination of level of antimicrobial activity. Thank you for watching Scaria.com.